uh, the next model, which is the texting model, and it's highly based on social capital. So it'll explain social capital to you, and also explain texting to you. So here's the texting model. Now, texting seems really complicated sometimes. It seems like it's a million different things that can happen, all, every interaction is different, where do I go, what's my game plan? Well, it's not as complicated as you think because all the different texts you can receive, basically there are only four texts. Okay, there are only four texts you can receive. Text number one, <coughs> silence. Who's ever received that text from a girl? Yeah, right? <laughs> Okay, silence. Text number two. Shit test. Right? Girl gives you shit, gives you a hard time, questions your frame, something like that. Okay? Shit test. Third one is anything that is logical, just like unemotional conversation. or asking a question, okay? She gives you like some logical, like a logical answer to a question without a lot behind it. She just said, tells you some like random thing about her day without any really emotional con thing or she just says like, um, uh, what do you, by the way, you didn't tell me what do you do for a living, that kind of stuff. Just, um, just conversational without necessarily emotional content. And number four is, um, That says clearly for those of you who can't see my A. Clearly positive, okay? So those are basically the four that you can get. And if you look at this in terms of social capital, this responds to, this corresponds to very low, okay? Some, but unsure, or you could look at it as a little social capital. Um, and that's a lot, okay? So silence, if you're receiving silence, that means you probably have very low social capital. If you're getting shit tests, you have some, but she's still kind of evaluating or testing it. If she's giving you just general conversational stuff, it means you have some social capital to work with. Um, and if you're, she's giving you things that are clearly positive, then that's when it's time to close. Right? It's time when it's, that's when it's time to get her out on a date. Okay. Um, and so the secret is each of these requires a different response from you. Okay? Silence, what does that require from you? That requires that you offer value. E-A-L-U-E. Offer value, ask for nothing. So the idea here is you're filling up your bank account, right? Your bank account's very low, you fill up your bank account. So this corresponds to sending just fun, interesting, um, you can send cool pictures, cool little events from your life, just general, general funny conversation, that kind of stuff. It's, it's being conversational, letting her see your personality. Um, key, ask for nothing. Right? You don't show a little piece of your personality and ask her for a date when she's responding with silence. Okay? Don't ask for things. Also, typically don't ask questions at this point because questions require a response. Right? If you ask the question and don't get a response back, you're losing a lot of social capital because it just looks really needy and really bad. Okay, whereas if you put something out that's not a question and don't get a response back, well, the, the response wasn't really required, so you haven't really risked much social capital there. Does that make sense? So offer value, don't really ask for anything. Typically, don't even ask questions in general, for the most part. There are obviously exceptions to every rule, but for the most part, don't ask questions there. Okay? If you get a shit test, all you do, the only thing you do, is pass the shit test. That is all. Don't pass the shit test and try and make plans. Don't pass the shit test and try and make conversation. Don't pass the shit test and offer like, like tons more value, a little bit maybe, but not much. 
Basically, you just pass the shit test. That's all, okay? So just pass. Quick word on passing shit tests in text. In live game, there are three ways to pass a shit test. Ignore, misinterpret, agree and exaggerate. Uh, misinterpret basically means treat it as though it was a positive. Agree and exaggerate means take whatever negative idea of the shit test and just take it to its logical conclusion so it seems ridiculous, okay? Um, ignoring it in text doesn't work very well. So you probably have to nix that one in text. Those three all work in live, and in fact, ignoring is usually the best one in live game. But in text game, ignoring doesn't really work. So be careful of that. <clears throat> also be really careful with shit tests of self-deprecating humor. It can be good if it's very clearly self-deprecating and you're being sarcastic, but because there's no tone of voice in texting um, and there's, it's hard to convey body language, it's very easy that you can just, she can just take it seriously and then you really look like an idiot. Okay, so be careful with getting too cute when you pass your shit test, because understand she can't understand the tone of voice that you mean when you text. But for shit tests, just pass. Again, don't try and escalate. Okay, just pass, no escalation. Okay. Now, if she's making a uh, logical conversation with you, asking you questions, that's kind of an interesting one because there you need to, you need to employ a little bit of common sense. Okay? In that case, it's generally positive, but I would look not just at the one text, but look at the overall interaction. If the overall interaction's been positive and she's doing this, I would start to move towards escalating and closing. If the overall interaction's been a lot of silence and a lot of shit tests and she's doing this, I would just tend to offer more value. Okay, so this is an either or. So it's either either offer value or start closing. Okay, um, and in a very rare case, um, if you know that she's by her phone and the logical question is highly positive. You might even be able to just pick up the phone and call her right after she texts because you know she's by the phone. That, that may be a time for that. Typically, you'd want to do that when it's clearly positive, but sometimes you could do it right there as well. All right, um, finally, if things are clearly positive, you want to be starting to close. However, even with the close, you want to do what I call the soft close, which is instead of going for like, let's grab you know, drinks Tuesday at this place as your close, I would start with something like, um, um, how do you feel about drinks and witty banter with cute boys? Or sorry, I might be like, how are you, are you adventurous? She says yes to that, I'd be like, okay, cool. How do you feel about drinks with cute boys? She says yes to that, and then I might suggest the close. So it's a multi-step thing. So instead of spending a lot of social capital, where if I hear I know it's a very big problem, I'd spend a little social capital. And remember, if I spend a little bit and get a yes, I gain a lot. I spend a little bit more and get a yes, I gain even more. And then when I finally do ask, I'm asking for a position of much more social capital. Whereas if I ask for the one big thing at the start, I'm very likely to hear a no, okay? So typically I'll start closing, but I'll kind of close in steps and do it as opposed to just one big close that's a huge social capital risk. So that's kind of the general texting model and how to do it. So each of these texts requires a certain type of response and it's all dictated on social capital. Because again, what she texts you gives you a very clear indication of what your social capital level is. So it tells you what you can get away with and what you can't. Okay. So um, when you are actually texting, what I suggest as a procedure is this. When you get the text message, um, first of all, understand, number one, you don't have to respond to every text message. Sometimes silence is okay. Not every text requires a response. That's also very true, especially um, if you're in maybe like this range here or this range here and you don't have time to see her right now, you don't have time to close, sometimes leaving a silence and picking it up later can be fine, okay? So understand that as well. Um, but what I suggest is this. Don't try and like make this your overarching model and become a robot in how you text. But a good thing to do is when you are gonna send a text, if you're not sure if it's good or you're not sure what to send or whatever, refer back to the model and at least make sure that you're not massively violating it. Make sure that she didn't give you a shit test and you're asking her out on a date, okay? So make sure that you're not doing something massively out of line with the model. Ideally, you want your texting to be fun and organic and convey your personality, but just make sure you don't get too far from general principles.